Kelly Bonner. Welcome back. I'm excited to be here today and to take you back to the basics and talk about machine quilting with rulers. Today we're going to be focusing on my machine quilting ruler, the inside out. Now I get the question all the time, are these rulers only designed for machine quilting on a long arm machine? The answer is no. Anybody can use these fun machine quilting rulers. As long as you have a few specific tools and notions, we're going to go over all those details, but yes, anybody on any type of machine can work with these machine quilting rulers. So today we'll be focusing on the inside out machine quilting ruler. I love this fun little ruler. It's a great companion to my four in one machine quilting ruler. In the videos today, I am going to demonstrate a few different designs that I will be quilting with the inside out machine quilting ruler. But before we hop over to the machine, I do want to point out just one of my favorite details about this inside out machine quilting ruler. So not only does it have this great great companion that's the same curve as the four in one. You're definitely going to see the more ruler work you do, the more you're going to want to have both sides of the curve because there are definitely times when it's more comfortable to hold one ruler versus the other. A couple of other fun features on this ruler, this cool angle here, it's great for corners, for points, things like that. We also have a fun curve down here on this end. And then on this straight side, we've got these notches. So they're a little bit difficult to see here, but what are these notches for? These are designed for doing straight lines. When you're starting out doing machine quilting, you have to eyeball where your needle position is going to be. When you're working, say, a straight line, a diagonal line point to point across a block, you'll have to use your ruler and hold it a quarter of an inch away from where you want your thread to intersect. So you always are having to think about, think a little bit ahead of time, that you want your ruler or your needle to intersect a quarter of an inch away from the side of your ruler. So there's a definite learning curve. But with the inside out machine quilting ruler, also the trailer and the mini inside out machine quilting rulers, we've created these little notches. So you line this notch up with the opposite corner that you're stitching to or the opposite point, and that will keep your line straight right along the side of this ruler. It's a fabulous ruler. We've got a ton of different designs teaching you how to use this machine quilting ruler. Today, let's hop over to my machine. We'll go over some basics and then I'll stitch out just a few designs showing you exactly how I use the inside out machine quilting ruler. Let's get stitching. Machine quilting rulers are different from rotary rulers. Machine quilting rulers are about twice as thick as rotary rulers. Mine are all a quarter of an inch thick. And the markings generally start at one half inch. The markings on the machine quilting rulers are measured from the needle. So you can measure distances between stitching lines with the ruler instead of having to mark out every single line. Machine quilting rulers can be used on long arm machines as well as domestic, mid arm, or sit down machines. If you're using the machine quilting rulers on a long arm machine, I highly recommend using an extended base plate around the base of your machine. This will create a larger working space and enable you to hold the ruler flat and flush up against the ruler foot. When using the machine quilting rulers on a domestic machine, you will need to make sure you have a ruler foot. A ruler foot is available from your machine quilting dealer and aftermarket ruler feet are also available. You'll also need to make sure that you're working on a machine that has the ability to drop the feed dogs and there's at least one quarter inch clearance all the way around the foot. Additionally, when working with rulers on your domestic machine, I highly recommend a grip material on the back of your ruler. We have this available on our website, peaceandquilt.com. This can also be used when working on a long arm machine. The grip material on the back of the ruler helps the ruler grip onto the fabric and stay a little bit sturdier. Now in all of my videos, I'm not always using grip. That's because I use move my ruler so quickly. That does not mean that you don't have to use grip or you can't. I highly recommend it. The rulers that we will be using here are the rulers that I have designed. 
and they are designed for machine quilting. Since these are my favorite rulers, that's what I always recommend. However, most machine quilting rulers can be used in the same manner. You can use the markings on the machine quilting rulers instead of marking out every single point to point. You can pick up the rulers, plus I also recommend picking up my book, Visual Guide to Creative Straight Line Quilting. In that book, I actually walk you step by step through the basics of machine quilting with rulers, plus there's 60 awesome designs teaching you how to machine quilt with rulers. Now, let's get stitching! I'll begin by using a blue Mark Begon marker and marking a T through the center of my block. After I've done that, I'll begin stitching. Using my inside out machine quilting ruler, I'll stitch along the first horizontal line right through the center of the block. After I've reached the right side of the block, I'll adjust and stitch along the right edge of the block down to the bottom. Then I'm going to move to the center point, stitching along the bottom of the block and stitch a vertical straight line right through the center of the block. When I reach the top of the block, I'm going to begin filling in these four sections with alternating lines. For my first line, I'm going to move over a quarter of an inch. I'll fill in that first section with quarter inch spaced lines. You'll notice here, as I'm stitching out those lines, I'm moving my ruler over so that the first outside edge of that ruler is lined up perfectly right on top of my previous stitch line. I'll continue doing that until I've filled in that section all the way. Then I'll move down to the bottom of the block. Personally, for me, it's easier to hold the ruler towards my body and push away from myself. So you'll notice that's what I'm doing here. I travel along the outside of the ditch or along the previous stitch line, moving up half an inch. So the half inch is the line that's marked on the inside out machine quilting ruler with a half an inch. I'm lining that line up right on top of my previous stitch line as I quilt. I'll continue moving over to the bottom right hand corner of my block. From there, I'm going to fill that one in with the vertical straight lines that are all a quarter of an inch apart, simply using the side of my ruler to adjust my spacing. After I filled in that bottom right block completely, then I'm going to move up to the top right hand corner block, which obviously here it appears to be the bottom left because I am showing you as if you are standing behind my machine. So I'll fill in that last section with the half inch spaced horizontal lines. After I've completed that, I'll stitch in the ditch all the way around the outside of the block to complete that design. Using my inside out machine quilting ruler, I'll begin stitching in the lower left corner. I'll line up those notches on the ruler so that they intersect where I want my stitching to go. I'll stitch from the lower left corner to the top center point. Now notice I did mark that point. That's something you can totally go through and add for a reference point. I use my blue Mark Beyond marker to mark that point. From that top center point, I'll stitch right back down to the bottom right corner. Once I've stitched to there, I'm going to begin filling in the outsides of that B that I've created and stitch heavy match stick quilting. So these are back and forth straight lines that you can stitch them as close as you would like together. They can be really close or they can be up to like a quarter of an inch apart or more really if you wanted more. But I'll stitch those straight lines back and forth filling in the outside of the block. I am using my machine quilting ruler here as a guide to help me stitch those lines nice and straight, but that's totally optional. If you can free motion quilt those lines and get them straight, then go for it. After I stitch to the top of the right hand side of the block, then I'll repeat the same process down the opposite side of the block. I'll finish off this design by stitching in the ditch all the way around the outside of the block.
Using my inside out machine quilting ruler, I'll begin stitching in the lower left corner. From that corner, I'll line up my inside out machine quilting ruler so that the first marked line on the ruler, the half inch marking, intersects the outside top left corner of the block. From there, I'll stitch right up to that first half inch point. Once I reach that point, I'll travel along the top ditch moving over half an inch. From that point, I'll stitch back down to the bottom point, that same corner where I started. I'll repeat this process stitching out three lines until I have three lines coming from that corner. Once I have my first set of three lines, then I'll repeat this same process from the point where I stopped at the top. I'll repeat that process now going towards the right border. Again, moving in a half an inch with each of those lines. Once I have completed that first set of those three lines, then I'll move on and repeat that process. As you'll see here, I'll continue the same concept, moving in three lines, stitching three lines with the top or bottom, the outside point I'll call it, all a half an inch apart. And I'll continue repeating this process, working my way around the block, moving in towards the center of the design. Now, if you are struggling when it comes to traveling along previous stitch lines or stitching in the ditch, you can always go through, instead of measuring with the ruler, you can always go through and add little markings with your Mark Be Gone marker. As I move in towards the center, I'll repeat the same thing. So the second time that I'm going around the block, you'll notice that, again, I'm doing those sets of three lines, but they're moving in from the inside points. I'll continue that same design until I reach the center of the block. <laughs> 